Three. I thank the Lord for making a way for us that this morning we can continue to worship Him even although we may be in different locations. I want to give you a short exhortation called a coronavirus psalm. And this we read from Psalm 31. If you have not been personally affected by the COVID-19 coronavirus disease, and if none of your family or close friends have had to be admitted to a hospital with serious illness, you may be skeptical of the measures recommended to slow the spread of this disease. Many Jamaicans resist the wearing of masks and the restrictions on public gatherings. As the number of cases rise, so suspicion of anyone with a fever or a cough will result in persons who are so affected being treated as the psalmist describes in Psalm 31 verses 9 to 15a. I'm reading from the Good News version. It says, Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes are tired from so much crying. I am completely worn out. I am exhausted by sorrow, and my strength has failed because of all my troubles. Even my bones are wasting away. All my enemies, and especially my neighbors, treat me with contempt. Those who know me are afraid of me. When they see me in the street, they run away. I hear my enemies whispering, and terror is all around me. But as for me, verse 14, I trust in you, O oh Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. I am always in your care. As a matter of fact, it is reassuring to know that this is not the first pandemic not the first plague, not the first pestilence that God has got to lead his people through. In every season of suffering, people of faith have turned to God for refuge and found strength, comfort, and healing. James chapter 1 and verse 2 says, My brothers and sisters, count it all joy when you are when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So many of our neighbors have lost income, and some have even lost their jobs. But be assured that God cares about your welfare. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 and onward, it says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. But Jesus says, Your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Rather, the scripture encourages us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will have enough troubles of its own. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Yes, indeed, each day has enough trouble of its own. So while he assures those who lack to avoid unnecessary worry, God instructs those who have the resources. According to James chapter 2 and verse 50, if a brother our sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warm and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What good does that do? Rather, we should be Luke, what is written in Luke chapter 3 and verse 7. He who has two shirts is to share with the one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. This is a spirit of sharing and caring for each other that we see demonstrated among the believers in Acts chapter 2. So 
So in this new season of renewed restrictions on gathering together, on meetings, weddings and funerals, as well as birthdays and other parties, plus with the curfew at night, loneliness, abandonment and separation from loved ones will increase. Even so, the instruction in James chapter 1 verse 27 reminds us that what God the Father considers to be pure and genuine religion is to take care of orphans and widows in their suffering, to visit them in their trouble. No matter how unfair life seems to be, no matter how uncertain the future, we can say with David as recorded in 1 Chronicles 16 and verse 34, Oh, give thanks to the 